You're about to see why the Raptors can win the East. The ways in which Toronto's covered up for the qualities Kawhi provided on the way to a title last year are on full display in 2020's playoffs, so this video breaks down the reason the reigning champs shouldn't be underestimated and the key factors giving them a great shot at getting back to the finals. First, a shout out to Ona, who says that Tatum and Brown are his favorite duo in the game, going on to say that Jason's established himself as a superstar and that these two have Kawhi and PG potential. Question coming up for next video, shout out, appreciate everyone. Quickly traveling back to the 2019 finals, and after Pascal Siakam's averages of 20 points per game in their six game series win over the Warriors, plus Pascal's MIP award winning season, it was easy to foresee his evolution into a star player. But then less than a month later, when a generationally great talent in Kawhi Leonard departed town, we knew one man, not even a developed Spicy P, could replace Leonard's two-way presence for Toronto, especially in the biggest moments. Then in late August, ESPN projected them to be sixth in the Eastern Conference, and right before 2019-20, NBA TV analyst Dennis Scott predicted they wouldn't make the playoffs. Instead this season, stepping up for the loss of quite possibly the best player in the league right now, Kawhi Leonard, the Raptors have seen massive internal development in several players from 2018-19. Along with Pascal Siakam, Serge Ibaka, Norman Powell, and Fred Van Vliet have all set career highs in scoring. How those four players have combined to replace the buckets of Kawhi from each area of the floor he dominated on has allowed Toronto to maintain the status of a legit title contender. Making up for Leonard's deadly perimeter daggers, there's Fred Van Vliet, who's leading Toronto in scoring so far in the playoffs and is fifth in assists among Luka and LeBron. In the Raptors' sweep of Brooklyn, Steady Freddy was more than just consistent as he shot a blistering 58.5% clip from three-point range. Last year in the finals, he was playing similarly dominant to what we're currently witnessing. He helped Lowry out who had 26 in game six of the finals by adding 22 points to close out the dubs and average 14 points per night in the finals. But the way Van Vliet's creating and then ruthlessly knocking down big time shots in this year's playoffs proves that following the Claw's departure, mentally and physically, Fred's reached a different level of eliteness. He's undersized, doesn't have the quickest burst of speed out there, but is more poised, crafty, and polished than anyone running an offense. When receiving a screen, Van Vliet can seamlessly bait defenses with saucy dribble combos, and even though you can keep up with him, his basketball IQ combined with that handle as well as deep range pull-up ability make him so damn special. Then there's the sixth man, Norman Powell, who after building up a reputation as an above average guard defender and being known for his slashing on the other end, has suddenly become a marksman from behind the arc. While the 27-year-old 17.3 points per game is good enough to place fourth in 2020 Raptors postseason scoring, most impressively for Norm is his shocking 47.3% three-point stroke. Kyle Lowry's ankle sprain is a slight concern for the Raptors, as even though he only shot 30% from three-point range in the first round and averaged only 12 points, he was bound to heat up and give Toronto even more firepower. But I'm not too worried about Lowry, the six-time All-Star's extremely durable, rarely misses games, and you can't forget Kyle's the best charge taker in basketball. Also, Kyle seemed to have learned a few things from his all-time great teammate last year, Kawhi Leonard, in the biggest moments, because his scorings improved tremendously in the clutch this year after securing his first chip. Partially mimicking Leonard's scoring talent down low in the paint, Pascal Siakam is an overwhelming presence either posting up in there or storming to the bucket off the dribble. But if you're somehow watching this, Pascal, in your upcoming second round matchup with the Celts, you need to be posting up as much as possible because beyond the key, Tatum and Brown are lengthy, active perimeter stoppers. But if Spicy P plays like an old school big man, pops out for the occasional jumpers, attacks in the pick and roll at times, but 80% of the time posts up and dominates, then Toronto takes care of the Celtics. The reason Siakam needs to feel completely confident in being as aggressive as possible is because he doesn't have nearly as much pressure on him as last year's number one option, Kawhi Leonard. Toronto's go-to scores this year are much more consistent than they were in 2018-19. The proof of that is Pascal averaging below his regular season scoring average and shooting percentage in round one, and Toronto easily taking care of Brooklyn. Siakam's one of the most confident, clutch, and talented scorers when he can get to his spot in the paint, but he's settling for too many jumpers right now. He can't forget what opens up space for those jump shots, but more importantly, 
how he carved out the reputation as an up-and-coming superstar in the first place, his slashing and spicy finishes down low. Next, taking another step in his development towards two-way eliteness, the 22-year-old OG Ananobi, who missed all of 2019's title run, has added dominant finishing to a resume revolving around defense. Ananobi's gaining top slasher-like momentum after using his newly polished and shocking spin move, but just the fact that he's fully healthy, ready to provide his lateral quickness, IQ, and strength defensively is an absolute blessing for Raptor fans these playoffs. From Tatum and Brown to Jimmy Buckets and Giannis, the beasts on the wing Toronto has to get through to still be around in October are no joke. OG has a chance to really make a mark among NBA fans as one of the best perimeter defenders in the Celtics series, because the two Boston wings, Jalen and Jason, drive their team's chances. Toronto has to shut down at least one each game to have a chance, and they won't have the all-time great defensive services of the claw to do that. But unlike last year, they'll have a rising menace locking down the perimeter in OG, not the worst defensive replacement in the world. Really, I could have extended the replacing Kawhi segment throughout the entirety of this video, but now I want to specifically key in on this overwhelming Raptor bench. Leading the charge along with the aforementioned phenom Norm Powell is the man who's played the third most amount of playoff games among active players right behind LeBron and Durant in Serge Ibaka. He averaged 19 and 10 along with a block on a field goal percentage of 60% and made eight of the 14 three-point shots he attempted in round one. Ibaka's inside presence though, stuffing shots defensively and bullying his way for buckets offensively is beastly. He's debatably the best backup center in basketball and has a ridiculous amount of experience in the postseason. You may have been stunned that Toronto didn't have a top 10 duo in my last video. That was because of Toronto's depth. It literally goes 1 through 15, and that's what makes them the title threat they are in 2020. Superstars mean more in the playoffs, of course, but you just heard about the Raptors' top heavy talent. Now for the talents that I could literally make a separate video on, like and subscribe for that, but other than Serge and Norm, I'll quickly break down Toronto's intriguing bench before you meet the coach of the year. Terrence Davis looked like a future Jimmy Butler earlier this season, but his production calmed down in the seeding games and playoffs. When Nurse plays him though, he's the perfect guy to bring out for some inside and out shot creating. We knew about his ability to get space for jumpers, but how about this poster from the 23-year-old rookie recently? Rondé Hollis Jefferson finished the season right behind Giannis, Anthony Davis, DeMontis Sabonis, and Bam Adebayo to place 11th in offensive rebounds per game. He's an all-out hustle player and another wing defender. Third string center Chris Boucher is one of three undrafted sensations in Toronto's rotation. Boucher would be a backup center on any other team as his seven foot four wingspan combined with athleticism and shooting make him a serious asset. And lastly, Matty Ice, Matt Thomas, who lights it up from deep like J.J. Redick when he's called upon for triples. He doesn't play much, but he's an absolute artist from distance and is utterly efficient out there. The best coach in the league was awarded the coach of the year in 2020 as Nick Nurse perfectly utilizes the deep core of talent granted to him. Last year in the finals, it was his box and one strategy to trap Stephen Curry that led the Warriors to their decline. And he continued that brilliant game planning all this season. You rarely see superstars going off against the Raptors as Nick knows exactly who to bring out and which strategy to use. Kendrick Perkins made an excellent point on Twitter saying that the Raptors play agenda-free basketball. That's a great point because with Nick Nurse tricky Nicky I call him not putting an equal emphasis on both sides of the floor like you'll see some coaches go heavy on offense and some coaches go heavy on defense. Nick Nurse doesn't do that. He's very steady on both ends of the floor. So because of that Toronto is able to win games in any fashion whether they have to win ugly or pretty. Toronto has the pick and roll stability defensively and constant trusting ball movement offensively to dominate anyone out east. For more NBA predictions, stories, and rankings, hit subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let me know why or why not you think the Raptors can win the East for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. My name's Adam. Call me D-Flow. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video.